Hi guys, it's George and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I will be doing somewhat of an insight or an evaluation slash review of Acne Studios and their new branding. There is very little to go by at the moment at this stage as they haven't addressed the fact that they're using a different typeface across their social media platforms themselves. However, some people have started to pick up on it. So I want to be one of the first to dive into this and see maybe what they're doing or why and to give my first initial thoughts. So before I get into it, as always, please like this video if you like this type of content. Leave a comment below letting me know what you think. Do subscribe to this channel for more videos and click that bell notification to be notified when I upload. Don't forget you can also follow me on Instagram at George Lawrence. Finally, very quickly, I've done a similar type of video to this for Burberry when they rebranded a couple of years ago. So if you do want to see that video, then please click the eye in the top corner. And yet again, please do let me know if you enjoy this sort of content because I would love to create more videos like this in the future. Starting from the very beginning, Acne Studios was founded in 1996. However, the Acne Creative Collective wasn't actually formed until 2002 with Johnny Johansson and three other people. Johnny Johansson today is still, of course, one of the co-founders, but is also still the creative director. So a lot of the brand visual identity and stuff will have gone through him or will have come from him. So I find it really interesting and important to mention him as a key figure in this change and the branding of Acne Studios. So it has been reported that Acne itself stands for for ambition to create novel expression, which I think is really cool and I think instantly says a lot about the brand. I don't think that fact is actually very well reported because I didn't know that until I did this research. I love the brand and still didn't know that, but I think that goes to show the values of the company, which Anderson and Robertson 2008 identified themselves that the values and what they aim to communicate is high fashion, individuality and innovative style, which I think all of those sort of come across in that ACNE acronym. Ambition to create novel expressions, which I think is really cool to the point and to me is just a good demonstration of all that acne seems to stand for. Now the name of the brand itself of course has caused a little bit of controversy in the past because despite having that nice acronym a lot of people associate the word acne obviously with the skin condition which isn't necessarily what a lot of people would want to be associated with if they're going to buy into a high-end brand. However that is the, one of the exact reasons why Johnny Johansson chose this and he has said himself that one of the reasons was because he liked the idea of appropriating a difficult word that has already negative associations and famously the brand itself was actually turned away from Harrods in London for that exact reason. They are now in store, which is really interesting and goes to show how much they actually have managed to appropriate and sort of change the meaning of the word acne. But initially Harrods weren't on board because it just doesn't have that great of a reputation. Now one of the reasons why I love Acne Studios is because one, I love the clothes and I love the fit of their clothes, which is really important to me. But also I really like everything that they are influenced by and everything they stand for, their passions. It goes beyond clothing. It's more art, design, um, literature and music, which are all things that I have like my favorites within and are things that I'm really passionate about. I'm a very creative individual and have that kind of modern but luxury aesthetic. I just really love the look and feel of this contemporary young brand. Anyway, I'm rambling. So I'm gonna get into the actual branding of Acne Studios itself. So Acne Studios do actually have a visual logo without the typeface. It's not used so much across their clothing or branding on their website and stuff, but they do have one. It's in a classic oval shape and depicts their original HQ in Stockholm because they are a Swedish brand. Acne have become famous for their packaging with the pink bags and the white typeface font. Again, really interestingly, and something that I really love about Johnny Johansson is that he chose that pink because he thought it was an ugly colour. So he wanted to sort of change the associations that already existed for that colour and turn it into something nice and that was ownable for him and his brand. So he was quoted by GQ Style in 2016 as saying, I wanted this pink paper because people considered pink being ugly, which I just think says everything and I love that mentality so much. So already from what I've briefly mentioned, you can tell that the ACNE acronym isn't very well sort of established. Not many people know what ACNE Studio stands for and it does still have some negative associations. So this, as well as their overall logo that they don't use very often and that many people don't actually know about. Paired with the fact that there was actually a study done at Stockholm University by Anderson and Robertson in 2008 found that there was weak correlation between the brand identity and brand image of Acne Studios. So I feel this could potentially be the crux of why they've decided to now roll out a new typeface and type logo to really improve upon that cohesion between their brand image and brand identity. So before before I go into my thoughts on their new typeface, I just wanted to share with you some interesting facts that I found on their previous logo typeface. So I found that this was actually created by a company called Letters from Sweden, which is obviously appropriate because Acne Studios is to a brand from Sweden. And this
This typeface was created and established in collaboration with Acne Studios in 2014, which isn't actually that long ago. So for a company to now start rebranding again, just after six years, I think that's really interesting. And the designer that has been attributed with this typeface logo and typeface is Johannes Svartone. I am probably destroying that name. I'm very sorry. And it's very simple. It's a very bold um, sans serif font, um, clean and I like it now because it has become synonymous with Acne Studios. There's not actually too much um, style, it's not very stylized, but I actually do believe now that people know that font, they will associate that with Acne Studios. And along with those pink bags that I mentioned briefly before, that for me is the Acne brand, sort of at a quick glance. People will know that bag and that typeface if they walked along the street, either saw the packaging or saw a storefront of Acne Studios. I think in this case, for a very modern and somewhat recent brand as Acme Studios because it doesn't have the same heritage or um, years behind it like Burberry does. Um, so I actually think the simplicity here in the sans serif font really works to show them as such a contemporary forward thinking Stark brand. Now going back to one of their earlier logos and this is a typeface that often accompanies their overall logo that I also just mentioned briefly. This Acne typeface is the original logo of Acne Jeans. This has been evaluated and is said to use a slightly modified version of the Times Modern font but here has had an added serif to the top of the A to differentiate it. Now my reference for that is Stephen Coles from 2013. Um, I don't know the reasoning behind why this changed because I also know now that Acne Studios denim range is called Acne Blah Const which means blue art, which I love because it makes sense. And Acne's history comes from their denim. That's how the brand started. Johnny Johansson actually, I believe, made 100 pairs of jeans with red stitching and gave them away to friends and family, which became so popular that sort of the business expanded from there. But yes, so now their denim range is called Acne Studios Black Const. And that uses an entirely different logo to this one. So again, they've experienced a change there. I feel like that probably is very telling of this brand that they are constantly evolving, constantly changing, and maybe just goes to show what's needed in the current climate for brands, especially if they're trying to appeal to a younger audience that they do need to constantly adapt and stay ahead of the game. But anyway, now going on to their new typeface that has been cropping up all over their social media, including their YouTube page and their Instagram. So their little profile picture has also changed to this new typeface, which has already been getting mixed reviews. I will add some of the comments that I've found here. Anybody that has noticed the change currently don't have great things to say about it, but that's sort of typical because anybody that has nice things to say, it will often just keep scrolling. They're like, oh, that's nice and we'll keep scrolling. But it's always the people that have a negative opinion that will make it known. So I wanted to just show a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the previous typeface that was um, created by Letters from Sweden in 2014, comparing that to the new one that has been recently rolled out since their full Winter 20 collection was shown. And I think instantly you can notice that there isn't actually a huge difference. So I believe there's a very slight variation in the pink that's been used, which is very interesting because this pink has been known as millennial pink and has been attributed with being a big color for that generation, which I think is a huge thing to be able to say and to attribute that sort of um, effect to Acne Studios. Just goes to show the impact they've had on popular culture. But to me, it looks a little bit deeper. I could be wrong. I believe the newer one is slightly deeper and warmer. And then of course, the other big noticeable change is the fact that the typeface font itself has gone from being white on pink to black on pink. I'm really divided by this change because I really actually liked um, sort of how pastel and pale the white and pink worked before. The black does add more contrast so will stand out more in different environments and I think as I mentioned for Burberry that's really something that a lot of brands are considering now as things move into the digital age so much more is done online. These logos and typefaces now have to work across a multitude of media so maybe that's the reasoning behind it. I don't know but it certainly is a little bolder now that it's black. Now the only other really main difference is the smoothness and roundness of all of the letters. So a lot of the, I don't know what they're called because I'm not a typography or font specialist, but a lot of the portions of the letters have been cut off and smoothed, kind of so it all sort of flows a lot better. It's a lot more modern. And I can't help, as soon as I saw the new typeface, I couldn't help but compare it to Dyson, the Hoover brand, because to me, that D now appears identical to the D that is in the studios part of Acne Studios typeface. I couldn't help that comparison. I don't like it for that reason. I think some of the letters work with the new um, sort of sleeker design, but 
Things like that D in studios, I'm not a fan of because to me it just screams Dyson and also looks very much like Beats, maybe reverse, but like the Beats brand with that that's in all the headphones. And to me that's already too established to try and include that into a different brand. So I'm a little bit torn. Currently, I think I prefer the previous. I don't think it needed further modernization. One thing I do like is that it's kind of stylizing it further. Despite sort of taking away, I feel like it's created more of an identity for the font, whereas previously it maybe could have been seen as sort of a very generic font. Now it does have a bit more style, but I feel like that style has already been adopted by brands like Dyson and Beats. I'd be very interested to hear your guys' thoughts, so please do let me know what you think below. I'm also going to be running a poll of what you guys think um, to the side, so please click that info bar and participate in the poll because I'm really interested to see which one you guys prefer. But as Acme Studios themselves haven't actually addressed this change in typeface or font or even a larger rebranding potentially, there isn't too much to say. I don't know where the new fonts come from. There's been nothing reported on online that says who maybe created this new typeface. So I can't give you that info at the moment. I'd like to do a follow up video maybe if that stuff does get revealed soon. And before I wrap this up, I just wanted to really give props to Acme Studios and to just highlight their Fall Winter 20 show because I think it is so clever and future thinking and innovative how they came to those designs. Essentially, Hypebeast have reported that their new collection was designed by artificial intelligence, which just blows my mind and is so incredible. So it was created and designed in collaboration with a generative artist called Robbie Barrett, with the intention to create a new and fresh take on some of the classic Acme Studios designs. So here's the clever part. What they did is they took thousands of previous Acme Studios designs, fed them into a computer with neural networks and generative systems. But a lot of these designs were inputted with intended flaws. So they weren't put in perfectly. And that was intentional so that hopefully this artificial intelligence could kick out some new designs that were completely off the cuff and unexpected, very in line with the Acme Studios brand itself. And this has been referred to as an organized mistake. That's what they were trying to capture here. And it is from the outputs from these machines that the director, Johnny Johansson, and his team then took and curated and sort of finalized the designs for the show. That for me is just incredible, mind blowing. I love that that is how this latest collection was created. And I just wanted to get that in this video. Just quickly, Johansson stated in his press release that it is amazing to see that artificial intelligence can be freeing as a creative tool. I wanted the collection to be alive with new possibilities for how we wear clothes while also being grounded in strange reality. That is everything for this video. I hope it wasn't too boring or I didn't drone on too long. Um, I find this stuff really interesting and I hope you guys do too. As always, please like this video if you like it. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think and also subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. Please click that bell notification and follow me on Instagram at George Lawrence. And I think that's everything. Thank you again and I will see you in my next video.